as we struggle with worship, as there are so many things, the worries and burdens of life that would rob us of our joy. We come to another psalm of joy, a song of joy. And it seems exuberant as it's calling us to proclaim the greatness of our God. A new song with new joy. But yet it seems that we are longing for that new day when we enter into that eternal day of the new creation, praising God forever. And there the fullness of his glory will be displayed as we dwell and live there with Christ, live there with the Father, seeing them face to face and joining with all of the redeemed and all the heavenly host and forever and being untainted by fatigue or sin, proclaiming the greatness of our God. But that is yet outside our present understanding. We can't grasp the greatness of God. Yet in Revelation, as God speaks to us in the revelation of Scripture, he invites us to examine who he is, his beauty, his majesty, his glory, his holiness, his judgments, his mercy, and his grace. These things must come to us afresh and we sing a new song a fresh song a song of a new week but a song that comes of each new day we have here a happy command for us in these first six verses let praise be sung why do people sing well nowadays so much of music is geared to commercial interests and it's coming at us from other places through our headphones and the car radio wherever it may be very few people sing nowadays very few people take a piece of music and play it for themselves or whistle down the street or hum a tune but people sing for many reasons or we respond to music in many ways it may be because of sorrow or loss and, and music appeals to our hearts. It may be because we've experienced love or it may be in response to something that is beautiful. But also as we think of spiritual songs, it is because of repentance and faith, the greatness of God's mercy and the wonder of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. But what then is this new song? Well, it is a song with a newness of heart that we sing to our great God, the one who is that great I am, complete in himself, but desires that we engage with him in singing his praises. Each new day, as Jeremiah reminded his people being carried to Babylon, is a day when this God shows us grace and mercy, reminds us that there is salvation, but calls us also to wait upon the Lord. It is a new day for those who are not Christians to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ, turning from sin and turning to him in faith. It is also a new day to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Five times in the Psalms, it calls us to think of a new song. They are not in this idea of new compositions, although at some point in history, these themselves were new compositions. But it is singing these inspired songs of the new kingdom with expectation that we will enter into that new kingdom as we think upon the king and the character of our God. But here we sing of salvation. We sing of good news. We bless his name. And in verse 2, what is this good news? It is his salvation from day to day. It is that ongoing relationship 
where we are safe and secure in God, all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a sacrifice for sin that is demanded by a holy God. It is shed blood. There is a sacrifice that was provided in the great plan of God that was the blood of a substitute son of man who also was the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The salvation tells us there is forgiveness and that forgiveness dearly bought is freely yours. Here is something to sing about. Daily we engage with the holy God as we think upon him and his revelation in scripture as we come to him in prayer and in repentance. But we do need to keep our hearts focused upon God, upon this good news amidst the trials that we experience in life. The good news is yet offered to those who are outside of Christ or those for whom they must make Christ their own because there are many trials and things to rob us of joy, let alone the six days that we may be absent from Sabbath fellowship of the trials that we face. But coming together in the name of our Savior, singing of the greatness of God, we lift our eyes as we lift our hearts and our voices to the majesty of God, to the one who is the great creator in the heavens, who has made the heavens and the earth. He desires glory among the nations because he made the nations and he calls the nations to account and Christ is the king of the nations. But Christ is also the same savior to all those in every nation who come and call upon his precious name. Men sing of many other things. As it says there, as God is to be feared above all gods, for the gods of the peoples are idols. People like to sing about themselves in the sense that like a cockerel, they are crowing about themselves. Look at me and my achievements. Look at me and the idols that I serve of materialism, of wealth and ambition, or of physical desires and appetites, self-centeredness, or some great regimes or plans that they have. They sing of their heritage. They sing of their nationality. They sing of many other things. But do they sing of the true and living God? Do they sing of the one who has given us all in the Lord Jesus Christ? We sing to the God of life, the God of power, the God of salvation, the God of victory, the one who brings good news for everyone. The idols that men sing to are not good news for everyone. But the God whom we proclaim in his greatness is good news to all who would come. Heaven is praising God. It's not just the number of people who are gathered here or the Christian churches in our district or even throughout this whole world. We gather with the heavenly host, the angelic choirs, but also of the redeemed who have gone on before people who we knew personally in the flesh and people who we never knew but will spend eternity singing with them. They have gone on before and so the proclamation is let praise be sung. They are singing and we sing with them. Secondly, let praise be shown. There is something more than just joining with our voices together in singing the words printed in a book. Those words printed, taken and paraphrased from the original text and the original Psalms in Hebrew inspired directly by the Holy Spirit in the psalmist's heart. We sing engaging our heart 
with these words and engaging with our God. Thinking of the greatness of our God, as it says back in verse 6, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We're thinking of where he is. But then in response to that, praise must be shown in our lives and our actions as we respond to the character of God. But in worship, we are given to God something that is due to him. Because ultimately, at the day of judgment, all nations will worship God. But sadly, so many will not come to him as Savior, having rejected him. But they will understand that he is holy, he is just. Even they despise him and reject him. They will have to give him that place because that's who he is. But we do not make God greater by our worship. Because as we gather here, it doesn't make God bigger or better or more glorious. But he is greater and more glorious among us. As we are reminding ourselves, reminding one another, declaring it and bringing him joy that our hearts are united and focused upon him. Declaring the greatness of God is a very solemn thing that we do. But it's a joyful thing that we do as well. If it makes the Lord happy, does it not make us happy? If we are doing something for a loved one that pleases them, we are pleased also. Heaven is full of his glory and strength is that glory seen among us as our lives are transformed by Christ? Do we have strength in our hearts to overcome temptation, to deal with the trials that we face as we come submitting to the work of the Spirit in our hearts? We delight in praising God, and he is delighted in the praise of his people. Give to the Lord. This is what is due to his holy name. Give to those things that are due to his name. We bring an offering and we come into his courts. It is a meager thing in a sense. Our ability to sing perhaps is faulty. Our mind wanders at times in our singing. Our hearts are burdened with many cares. How easily we are distracted. But here is why it is so important that we focus upon the character of God, what he has done. We seek even in this short time of collective worship to set aside some of these things, these burdens, lay them at the cross, lay them before God, and take up with unity the praise of our great God. Think of Christ, the one in the glorified flesh, identifying with us in the resurrected body, the first fruits of our own. He didn't cast that off when he ascended and leave his resurrected body in another grave for the disciples to bury. He carried that to the right hand of the Father. He is directly connected with you and each one of us in our own promised future if we are in Christ. So much is Christ ours and we are his. This guarantees his presence with us. It also guarantees that his shed blood accepted in heaven satisfied the Father's justice against our sin. We are forgiven. We will be resurrected. His nearness to the Father as we think upon him guarantees that your prayers are heard and also that your worship is carried to God our Father. So let praise be shown. Coming into his courts, thinking of the beauty of the holiness of God, and we reflect upon this holiness as it, we respond, as this beauty is shown in our lives. As we sing the words of Scripture, there are many challenging words. Those that convict us of our own sin and unrighteousness. Those that proclaim fearfully the hand of a holy God against those who reject Christ and his way of grace. 
It mocks those who are foolish in their rebellion against God, seeking to find their own way to God, to please God by their works. But it displays plainly the promised and finished work of Christ. There is a way to the Father. Praising our God is a beautiful thing. And the lives of Christian people should share that beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Reflecting his holiness, reflecting the robes of righteousness and with which we serve God and how we display the greatness of our God. This offering of praise costs us our own glory because we are saying God is great. We are not great. We are saying God is holy. We are not holy. We are saying Christ is glorious and our Savior. We have not saved ourselves. Yes, our own glory is compromised as we worship God. But we are declaring the greatness of our God. We're not self-righteous. We're not self-made individuals. But we are sinners that are saved by Grace, precious gift of God, priceless as we think of it, but without cost to ourselves. Tremble before him all the earth. Without Christ, men and women must tremble. The great God who is coming, the great God who keeps all things together until the day of judgment, but likewise, even as we worship God, we tremble fearfully at this great God because without him, there is no forgiveness of sins. Let praise be sung here as the command. Let praise be shown that it transforms our lives, our attitudes to one another, our attitudes to our burdens and cares, our attitudes to life, and our attitudes to God as we think of eternity. Thirdly, as we look at verses 10 to 13, let preparation be made. We prepare as we come to worship. The whole section in the Psalms about those preparing as they went to Jerusalem on the various times of festivals. We do prepare. If we are preparing to go out to some event, preparing to meet someone special, we do make a change to our life. There are things that we do differently so that we're ready. So we come to ex not only to express the joy of being in that person's company, but also that we will gain the greatest experience from that time. Likewise, coming to God and worship, we prepare we prepare an expectation that he speaks and we are changed. But there is a preparation here that we'll be thinking about also this evening in Psalm 98, that the Lord is coming. This is a wonderful hope for the Christian, for the weary Christian, for the Christian struggling with temptation, struggling with burdens and worries of care, the Lord is coming. This is a call for all nations. And we say with joy in verse 10, we sing, the Lord reigns. Isn't this wonderful? The Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It shall not be moved. This world will not be destroyed before the Lord's time. There will be nothing that will thwart the coming of Christ to deliver his people that we may enter into the new flesh, delivering us from the power of the grave. There is nothing that will prevent him being victorious over the rebels, those who are disobedient, those pursuing the ways of sinful rebellion. The call is for all nations to join with us and say in faith, the Lord reigns. A happy thing, 
A great thing that such a good God whom we're praising is in charge and enthroned on high and Christ appointed in this season as king over creation is the one both saviour and final judge. In this great statement, the Lord reigns. It also says he will judge the people righteously with equity, with holiness, with grace and with mercy. That comes from thinking about God, from thinking who it is that we sing about and whom it is that we sing to. But also he is a God who has made peace with us through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God reigns. In praise and prayer, we come through Christ to the Father. Not through the gods of men's designs, of their good works, of their wealth, their power, their great systems to to right the wrongs in this world. But we come through that transforming work of Christ upon the cross. The power of sin is broken. The power of death in the grave is destroyed. And we look forward to the coming of the Lord. The same God who is beautiful in his holiness. The one that we worship thinking of him in the glory of heaven is the one who comes to judge. But in Christ we will be without condemnation. Therefore you can ask for the forgiveness of sins. And he will judge you according to the righteousness of Christ that has been placed upon the record of your life. What then is this new song? We look forward to that day when he is coming. And there will be a new day, a new morning that is everlasting. And we will sing that fresh new song forever and ever. But each day that we rise, each week that we begin, it is an opportunity to sing with that new freshness, the songs of praise to God. Let the heavens rejoice, as it says there in verse 11. Heavens are rejoicing, but we're bringing it down from the eternal heavens to even the glory of the sky and the stars and the vastness of the universe. Let them rejoice. Let the earth be glad that God reigns. Let the sea make as great a splash as it can. Let the greatest harvest be gathered in. Let the strongest trees grow and stand for thousand years. These are all great and glorious things. But even they are passing away. The greatest thing is that he is coming. Coming for his people. Coming for you. He will judge in righteousness and truth. In Christ, we have nothing to fear and we have everything to gain. And in the beautiful presence of our God, in the resurrected flesh, we will be singing the new songs of glory. Sing these songs with a fresh heart of praise. Sing and bless his holy name. Amen.